Now, this is one of the best, strongest barbarian Hoda build for the Abattoir of Xur. This build is inspired by the Chinese build who completed the first tier 25 AOZ dungeon named Xing Lawa. And I also took some great tips from Rob2628. They give out crucial information on this build and are very knowledgeable about barbarians. I have listed their videos in the description below if you want to check them out. Now, I did make some adjustments to the build to maximize my defense and survivability and to cap out my resistance. Now, the only thing I didn't do is level up my Tears of Blood Glyph. It's only at level 12, but with the level 12 Tears of Blood Glyph, I was able to clear a tier 17 AOZ dungeon. Any higher tiers, I just run out of time. So to push higher tiers, you just need to level up your Tears of Blood Glyph. And the Chinese build had a level 140 Tears of Blood Glyph and was also using the snapshotting bug. Now, I'm not going to use any snapshotting bugs for this build, but if you do use the snapshotting bugs, as well as having a higher level Tears of Blood Glyph, you should be able to push a lot higher tiers in AOZ. And I highly recommend you to watch this video from the very beginning to the end and check out the tips section because it may answer all your questions. So let's check this out. So first I'm going to show you clearing a tier 17 AOZ dungeon. Now like I mentioned before, this is the max tier I can do without running out of time. My Tears of Blood Glyph is at level 12 and I decided I wanted to work on another character instead of grinding out my Tears of Blood Glyph and the Glyph will be lost when the season ends. But if you have a higher level Tears of Blood Glyph, you should easily push higher tiers in AOZ because you will do more damage which will save you more time. And at my Tears of Blood Glyph level, I just run out of time before I can complete the dungeon. Now this is an end game build and every piece of gear will need the exact stats to easily clear high tier AOZ dungeons. If you're just missing one stat on any piece of gear, it will make a big difference. Okay, so next for the skills, and I do want to mention that my skill layout is set up like this because personally it's just easier for me to do the Whirlwind and Hammer of the Ancients combo. So I'm using two core skills, and the first core skill I'm using is Hammer of the Ancients, and this will be our main damage dealing skill, and you should always use your overpower hit with this skill. The next core skill I'm using is Whirlwind, and this skill is just used to swap our weapons and that we don't waste our overpower hit. And the next skill I'm using is Rallying Cry, and this will grant us Unstoppable and increase our resource regeneration. The next skill I'm using is Whirlwind cry and this will increase your damage and grant you berserking the next skill i'm using is challenging shout and this skill is used for defense and survivability and the last skill i'm using is the ultimate skill wrath of the berserker and this will grant you berserking unstoppable and greatly increase your damage and next for the weapon expertise i am using the two-handed axe expertise and this will greatly increase your damage to vulnerable enemies Okay, so next for the Vampiric Powers. And I do want to mention that the Vampiric Powers are really important for this build. Your Vampiric Powers will help you apply Vulnerable to all your enemies and is a good source for defense and survivability. So the first Vampiric Power I'm using is Prey on the Weak. And this will greatly increase your damage to Vulnerable enemies. But most important, enemies are vulnerable while affected by a Vampiric Curse from your other Vampiric Powers. The next Vampiric Power I'm using is a Cursed Touch. And this states Lucky Hit, up to a 44% chance to inflict Vampiric Curse on enemies. Afflicted enemies have a 15% chance to spread to other enemies. So using a cursed touch and prey on the weak, you should be able to spread vampiric curse to all the enemies around, which will also apply vulnerable to them. The next vampiric power I'm using is metamorphosis, and this will grant you unstoppable when you evade, and you will also apply vampiric curse when you evade through an enemy. So this vampiric power is really good to get out of crowd control. And also when you apply vampiric curse to an enemy, the enemy will be vulnerable because of the vampiric power prey on the weak. The next vampiric power I'm using is ravenous, and this will greatly increase your attack speed when you lucky hit. And the last vampiric power I'm using is resilience and this will greatly increase your damage reduction for each life you are missing now i do want to mention that you can switch out resilience or domination if you need more damage because having more damage you'll be able to clear the dungeons faster but in the highest tier aoz dungeons resilience will be better and this vampiric power is really good for defense and survivability making it really easy to survive the high tier aoz dungeons Okay, so next for the skill tree. And I do want to mention that I did remove the Shaco helmet, so it's just easier to see the skill tree. But the Shaco is required for this build. Because you are going to save one skill point, and you need that one skill point for another skill for this build. But I'll go over that skill point when I re-equip the Shaco. So starting with the basic skills, I put one point into Lunging Strike, and a point into Enhanced Lunging Strike. And you only take these skills just to get to the next path. Next for the core skills, and we are taking two core skills. So I put one point into Whirlwind, and a point into Enhanced Whirlwind. And Whirlwind is just used for our weapon 
weapon swap and not to waste our overpower hit. Next, I put five points into Hammer of the Ancients, a point into Enhanced Hammer of the Ancients, and a point into Furious Hammer of the Ancients. And this is our main damage dealing skill. And we'll always use our overpower hit with this skill. Next, for the defensive skills, I put three points into Imposing Presence and three points into Martial Vigor. And these skills are really important for defense and survivability. Next, I put one point into Rallying Cry, a point into Enhanced Rallying Cry, and a point into Tactical Rallying Cry. And this skill will grant you Unstoppable and increase your resource regeneration. Next, I put one point into Outburst and one point into Tough Ass Nails. And these skills are just used to get your legendary aspect Disobedience to max sax. And then I put one point into Challenging Shout. And this will greatly increase your damage reduction for defense and survivability. And I do want to mention that you can save one skill point here if you're wearing the Shaco. Next, for the Brawling skills, I put one point into War Cry, a point into Enhanced War Cry, and a point into Power War Cry. And this skill will grant you Berserking and increase your damage. Next, I put three points into Aggressive Resistance. And this will increase your damage reduction while berserking. Next, for the weapon mastery skills, I put one point into thick skin and three points into defensive stance. And this skill will increase your damage reduction while you are fortified. And then I put three points into counter offensive. And this will greatly increase your damage while you're fortified for over 50% of your maximum life. Next, for the ultimate skill, I put a point into Wrath of the Berserker, a point into Prime Wrath of the Berserker, and a point into Supreme Wrath of the Berserker. And this skill will grant you berserking and greatly increase your damage. Next, I put one point into Tempered Fury and three points into Furious Impulse. And this skill is really important because every time you switch weapons, you will gain 6 fury. And then I put 2 points into invigorating fury. Now ideally, you want to put 3 points into invigorating fury. So when you wear the Shaco, you want to remove a point from challenging shout and put it into invigorating fury. And this skill will heal you for every 100 fury spent. Next, I put 3 points into heavy handed, 3 points into wallop, and 3 points into brute force. And these skills will greatly increase our damage. And then I put 3 points into concussion. And this skill will have a chance to stun enemies when you lucky hit. And last but not least, for the key passive, I put a point into unbridled rage and this will greatly increase our core skills damage and since right now i am wearing the shako i don't need to put a point into challenging shout and i can still use this skill so this is where i save one skill point Okay, so next for the gear, and I do want to mention that there is one piece of gear that you can switch around if you're not doing enough damage. But ideally, you want to use the gear I'm using right now, because then you don't really need to worry about defense and survivability. But I'll go over everything while going over the gear. And I do want to mention that this build is very gear dependent, and every stat will make a difference. So if you are just missing one stat, that one stat could be the main difference, especially the stats on your chest piece and your pants. And I do have the full build layout in a D4 build planner in the description below. So starting with the helmet, I'm using the Shaco, and this is just the best helmet in the game because of its unique aspect, which grants you 20% damage reduction. In addition, gain plus four ranks to all skills. Next for the chest piece, and I do want to mention that every stat on this chest piece is important. So you're looking for total armor, damage reduction, damage reduction from close enemies, and damage reduction while fortified. And the legendary aspect I have is that you gain 1.1% increased armor for four seconds when you deal any form of damage, stacking up to 66%. Next for the gloves, you're looking for critical strike chance over power damage, a chance to restore your primary resource, and plus four ranks to hammer the ancients. And the legendary aspect I have is that each point of fury you generate while at maximum fury grants your next core skill 2% increased damage up to 30%. Next for the pants, and all the stats on the pants are required if you're trying to run through the dungeons without worrying about defense and survivability. You're looking for total armor, damage reduction, damage reduction from close enemies, and damage reduction while fortified. And the legendary aspect I have is that each point of fury generated at maximum fury grants 41 fortify next for the boots and i do want to mention that you need these exact resistance on your boots if you want to easily max out all your resistance and just use one gem to cap out your resistance so you're looking for movement speed fire resistance poison resistance and shadow resistance and the legendary aspect i have is that lucky hit damaging enemy with a core skill has up to a 40 percent chance to extend the duration of berserking by two seconds double this duration if it was a critical strike and this legendary aspect is important to extend your berserking next for the weapons now for the two hand and mace you're looking for all stats strength overpower damage and damage while berserking and the legendary aspect i have is that after swapping weapons eight times your next skill will overpower and deal 100 percent increased overpower damage and this legendary aspect will greatly increase our overpower damage next for the one-handed weapons you're looking for all stats strength overpower damage and damage while berserking and the legendary aspect i have is that hammer the ancient sticks outward and its damage is increased by 15 percent the next one-handed weapon i'm using is the doombringer and i do want to mention that your 
actually losing damage using this weapon compared to using another weapon like this. The only reason you're using the Doombringer on the highest level AOZ dungeons is just for its defense and survivability. Because the Doombringer will greatly increase your maximum life, it has a chance to heal you in its unique aspect, has a chance to reduce the enemy's damage around you. Now the next two-handed weapon I'm using is the Grandfather, and this is just one of the best weapons in the game, and it will greatly increase your damage. Next for the Amulet, I'm using the Banished Lord's Talisman, and this will greatly increase your overpower damage. Next for the Rings, the first ring the stats you're looking for is Critical Strike Chance, Damage While Berserking, Maximum Fury, and Resource Regeneration. And the legendary aspect I have is that killing an enemy or hitting a boss with a core skill refunds 27% of its base fury cost. Can only happen once per skill cast. And this legendary aspect is really good to regenerate fury. And the second ring I'm using is the Ring of Red Fury. And this will guarantee your core skill to critical strike and greatly increase your damage. Okay, so that's pretty much the best armor set that you want to use for this build. But I do want to mention that when I got to the higher tier AOZ dungeons, I needed more damage because I was running out of time. Now, obviously the best way to gain damage is to level up your Tears of Blood Glyph. But unfortunately, I didn't want to grind and level up my Tears of Blood Glyph because I wanted to work on another character and the glyph will disappear at the end of the season. So I did use Tybalt's Will on the higher tier AOZ dungeons. But I do want to mention that you have a high chance of dying using the Tybalt's Will and you have to play really carefully. Using legendary pants with total armor and three damage reduction stats is a lot easier to clear AOZ dungeons and you don't really need to worry about your defense and survivability. So if you didn't level up your Tears of Blood glyph, then you may need to use Tybalt's Will just to get enough damage. But eventually you do want to use legendary pants with a lot of defense and survivability. Next for the gems. Now for armor pieces, you're looking for sapphire gems so you can get damage reduction while fortified. For your weapons, you're looking for ruby gems to greatly increase your overpowered damage. And for your jewelry, you're looking for skull gems to increase your armor. But I do want to mention that one of my rings, I do have a sapphire gem so I can cap out my cold resistance. And as you can see, all my resistance are capped out. Okay, so next for the Paragon board. And I do want to mention on the Paragon board, I did focus more on defense and survivability. With this Paragon board, I was easily able to max out my resistance and get all the important legendary notes. Now, I'm just going to quickly go over this Paragon board, but I will have the full Paragon board layout in AD4 build planner in the description below. So starting with the Star board, the glyph I'm using is Territorial. And this glyph is important to gain damage reduction against close enemies. Then I went this way. And the next Paragon board I took is Carnage. And the glyph I'm using is the Tears of Blood glyph. And this glyph will greatly increase your damage and i do want to mention that it is important to take these nodes up here to max out your cold resistance and i also took the legendary node carnage which will greatly increase your attack speed while berserking and with this paragon board i did split it up into three directions so first going left i took the weapon master paragon board and i highly recommend to take these nodes and also these nodes to cap out your lightning resistance and i did take the legendary node weapon master which is very important because swapping weapons grants you four percent of your maximum fury then heading back to the carnage paragon board and heading up this way and the next paragon board i I took is blood rage and it's very important to take these nodes to cap out your fire resistance and i also took the legendary node blood rage which will greatly increase your berserking damage heading back to the carnage paragon board and then heading this way the next paragon board i took is decimator and the glyph i'm using is eerie and this glyph is important because it'll increase your berserking damage and while berserking you take 10 percent reduced damage from elites and i also took the legendary node decimator which will greatly increase your damage when overpowering a vulnerable enemy then i headed down this way and the last paragon board i took is warbringer and make sure you take these nodes to increase your maximum fury and i also took the legendary node or bringer which will grant you fortify every 75 fury you spend okay so that's pretty much the best paragon board setup for this build and with this paragon board you should have plenty of defense survivability and max out all your resistance Okay, so next I'm going to go over a couple tips to easily clear high tier AOZ dungeons. The first tip is you want to drink an elixir. And the best elixir to use is the elixir of resourcefulness because this will increase your maximum resource by 50. The next tip is that you want to use some magic incense. So you want to use Chorus of War, which will increase all your stats and increase your critical and overpowered damage. The next incense you want to use is Spirit Dance, which will increase your dodge by 5%. And the next incense you can use is Soothing Spices. And this will increase your resistance to all elements by 10%, maximum resistance to all elements by 1% and increase your armor by 150. The next tip is for your whirlwind skill and for your arsenal selection you want to choose dual wield and the only reason why is that you'll attack a little bit faster. And the last tip is you want to practice swapping your whirlwind and hammer of the ancient skill because there's a timing and if you get the timing down you can swap skills really quickly.
Okay, so thanks for checking out one of the best, strongest Barbarian Hoda build for the Abattoir of Zer. And this build is inspired from the Chinese build from Xing Laowa. And I also took some awesome tips from Rob2628. They are considered one of the best Barbarian players in Diablo 4. And I have listed their videos in the description below. Now, I have made some changes to the build to focus more on defense and survivability. And my Tears of Blood Glyph is only at level 12. But if you have a higher level Tears of Blood Glyph, you should be able to push higher level tiers in AOZ. And if you don't have any uber uniques and a build to get to at least tier 9 AOZ, check out this video here. Hope this helps in more Diablo 4 videos to come, so stay tuned. And of course,